Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Deity's Domination by Fedja Buzanic. And it is a game for three to four players, takes about 45 to 60 minutes to play the game, and is for ages 13 and up. In the game Deity's Domination, you're playing as a malevolent or a benevolent god, in which you're imposing your will upon the territory to which you control. You're going to control a tribe of people, and you're going to uh, basically be using your hand of cards to kind of manipulate what they're going to be doing, whether it be building shrines or building villages, traveling across lands and fighting monsters, all at the same time as dealing with your opponents that are in the game that are also attempting to do the same thing. Can you control the will of the people and secure your place in a little foothold in society while using these tiles to basically enrich the land and increase the uh, approximate uh, territory of your land while also making sure your opponents don't do the same? Whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game is going to be the winner, along with the player who is doing the best strategy to make sure their opponents are lower in score. All right, go ahead and take a look at the game Deity's Domination down below. So here we have the game Deity's Domination and everything that is included in it. Of course you're getting in the box as well as the rule books which you'll find inside. Over here are your player voids which will indicate not only your different stats along with the different actions and your victory point costs but also how you take your turns. Over here is the monster plaque which can have the first, second, and third monster deck along with the monster deck of cards you'll be setting aside and putting into the three different areas. You have two different types of tiles, the basic grassland tiles that won't have anything on them and then of course the special terrain which you'll be building the board around. You're going to be also beginning to choose one of these many different gods to utilize in the game. These will be you, along with the special powers included, and of course their specific god cards. Every god, god card is going to have their own unique set of cards that you'll add to a base deck. Speaking of base decks, this is the base deck, which is going to have a two movement here of spaces, along with one of each of the other additional cards. There's nine cards in total here, and up from one to about five cards in this specific deck, which you'll take and shuffle together. You have the two different types of uh, cards you can pick and put into your deck when you build certain things, such as your uh, cities and of course your shrine uh, cards that you can go ahead and choose and put in here. You're going to also get tribute tokens and tribute um, pieces, which will allow you to basically gain victory points throughout the game. Your battle dice, and of course all of the different meeples and whatnot. You'll have tokens, heroes, boons, crops, villages, castles, shrines, and of course temples all in this bag, which you'll go ahead and choose one of the different four colors to play the game. It's a three or four player game, so you're going to need at least three players to play and at max four players, and that is pretty much what you're going to be getting inside the game. All right, let's talk about the game. So as for setup as well as the turns, I'm just going to talk about how the turns kind of work and then we'll go ahead and show you the setup of the game along with a turn or so of one of the characters so you get an idea of how it plays. But you're basically going to be getting a board, you're going to be getting a god along with their specific god cards. So if I went ahead and picked up Odin here, I take all the Odin god cards and put them in my deck of nine cards, shuffling them up, and I get maybe 10 to about 14 or 15 cards depending on the different types of gods. The god will give you a specific ability, like this guy says boons and crops placed on north lands cannot be destroyed and also the god powers, which are the cards. It says you gain a hero or gain three growth. Then you're going to have your deck of cards. Make sure you shuffle that up, and you'll be using this board. You're going to actually be taking your little pieces here and putting them down for fervor, power, and growth on seven. That's where it's going to start, along with your victory point tracker starting at the very beginning of the track. In a basic game, it's up to 12 points. If you want to play a longer game, you can go up to 20 points if you'd like. On the board here, it tells you how your turn works. It's pretty simple. Choose to buy tributes or exchange tributes for a victory point. So you're going to have the these little purple guys here and at a certain point you can go ahead and spend them to gain victory points in the game and sometimes people can stop you from doing that especially when you have a temple then after that um, you can go ahead and take your actions and there's four different things you can do you can play three cards or discard three cards from your hand you could perform the build action and build as many cities or villages or any of these types of things you can uh, with the characters that you have provided the other resources then you could choose to battle instead which is taking a, a character bring it onto a battle space using your power to then manipulate uh, flipping over one of the monster decks and trying to fight them based on your battle die, presuming you have any to start with, or if you acquire them from uh, fight from gaining them due to uh, placing down castles on the board. And then finally, you can trash any number of cards from your hand. Trashing is actually removing them from the game, so it kind of cleans up your deck a bit, which is giving you that little deck building aspect of the game. A lot of the cards in your deck are going to allow you to do certain things like moving heroes, adding boons, which is basically a resource, gaining fervor, which is a specific type of power. You can gain heroes, which are, of course, other resources. Sources, and finally the other one which you're going to be gaining a lot which is I believe it's called uh, crops which are these little guys here you'll be using that on the board as well after you've taken one of those different actions this next player's turn they're gonna to get to do the same thing and you're going to go back and forth around the table until somebody reaches that final victory point goal all right let's go and take a look at the setup of the game and basically how a turn will work I'll show you the different actions and whatnot so now we're back to deity's domination the full setup of the game as you see the boards already been set up and for one player you see how it's supposed to be set up 
These are just extra gods that you can go ahead and look at. Poseidon, Zeus, um, Morgana, Morgana, Hera, all these different people. You won't need them after you've selected the three or four for the different players. There's also a set of tiles here, which I'm just going to go ahead and show you. that There's the, there's the uh, this area here, which is a coastland. you got Northlands, Orchards. You've got the Forest and Mountains. And these are Grasslands. This is going to be the main setup of the game. Now, one little critique I should say already is the fact that you're supposed to have six of these guys that are just neutral, and you place them down. But for some reason, it didn't come with us. So I'm not going to really like hold it against them in the review, but uh, most likely these will not be included in the base setup of the game, unless somehow the rules have changed. This is your deck of uh, tiles when you're going to be placing extra stuff. you got your two decks here, which whenever you build certain things, you'll be able to basically deck build and add these to your deck. Your main deck of cards, which you'll go ahead and shuffle, and then you're going to separate the monster piles into three different piles of monsters. It won't really matter what monsters they are, just make sure that they're even. you got your uh, seven points for uh, fervor, power, and growth, and your victory points, which are going to start over there. Now, to begin the game is you're simply going to have uh, basically one of these villages here and one of these people, and you're going to put the soldier and village in one space, the next player is then going to get to do the same, and the next player, and, bat and all the way in a, in a circle until everybody has picked two spots, one with the... Uh, Two, with, with, of course, the soldier and the villager. So there should be uh, two sets for each different player. After that is done, the first player is going to get to go. And that's pretty simple how it works. You're going to draw five cards from a deck, just like a normal deck builder. Uh, sorry, six cards, actually. So a little extra different than uh, the normal deck builder. You get one extra. And then you're going to have all these different cards in your hand. You're going to do you're going to do your start of your turn stuff, which tells you all right here how it works. The tribute resolution phase, which is if you have uh, ways to gain these guys, you can then, if you get five of them, you could dump them for one of these guys, which will allow you to basically cut your point total by one, and so when you win the game, if you, you only need one less, which is kind of cool. However, you're likely to get those from temples, and temples are going to be giving you two of these each round. If you want to stop that from happening, somebody from gaining these, you can actually spend four resources in any combination to stop one of them, and if two people do it, you can stop both of them, because once you get five of these, you can tribute resolute. Okay, so after that, it goes to the action phase, which we talked about already, uh, and I'm just going to show you a couple of all the different actions as how, how you would play it. First of all, the action faces choose and perform one of them uh, playing three cards from your hand so we'll just go ahead and show you the three uh, all the six different cards we have here I'll actually show you all the cards and show you how they kind of function this one allows you to move heroes a, a hero two spaces which would just go one and two that could be one card you would play you can play both of these if you have them in your hand gaining crops you can simply take two crops and then put them anywhere on the board that you'd like so for instance you could choose to place them there even though your heroes are not there it doesn't matter where you place them crops are going to be used uh, in the the cost in order to build certain things like a village, castle, shrine, and a temple, along with potentially battling monsters and gaining tributes. Uh, this is an expand the map card. You could play this and simply draw a card from the top of the deck and place it anywhere on the board that you'd like. If you did that, you'd simply put that guy just like that. Uh, gaining a hero is going to let you gain one of these guys here, and you could place it on your uh, location on your location with a village. It's a one uh, requirement as far as the resource goes, where you have to put where you have to put your dudes. Gaining boons, you'll simply take this. It's also resource and put it anywhere you want. You've got gaining power, growth, and of course fervor. That, that are these things here, and these actually require you to spend them in order to build certain things throughout the game. And then, of course, you have your special abilities, which this one here is uh, gaining one hero using Odin's ability. So you could choose to basically draw six, play three, and then draw back up again. If you don't like that, you can choose to discard cards as opposed to using them. You could discard three cards and then draw up again. The other thing you could do is perform the build action, and the build action is pretty simple. Uh, it's going to have an action, which is what you can build, uh, the cost, which tells you you've got the soldiers you might, might need, or boons, uh, you've got the different uh, growth, or not growth, I should say, um, the crops, and then sometimes you'll need these ones as well. But the idea is pretty simple. If you have the requirements on a specific area, you can spend them, and then you can place uh, a, a building on a location. That is going to give you an effect, such as gaining a village card, which are going to be uh, these guys over here, or you can gain a battle die, which are these, which are used to fight monsters. You could also choose. You could also gain something like a shrine card, which are these, very very powerful. And then on your turn, you gain a tribute. That's a temple that allows you to gain these two tributes here, um, and players can remove them. And then uh, that that's pretty much it. What you can mainly build. There's the battling monsters, which tells you it's going to cost you three power. And then tributes. You can exchange five tributes.
points for a victory point. Okay, so that's another option you could choose to do. Battling monsters. So for instance, this is a battling monster area. It shouldn't be here, but let's say it is. And he's here. Let's say he wants to battle a monster, right? Well, what he's going to basically do is he's going to spend three power. So we'll actually just use our character here so he got there somehow. And he's going to spend his three power, one, two, three. And then after that, he's going to have a battle dice based on whether his god has battle dice or he's actually managed to play some uh, castles because castles say gain battle dice. So if he had these guys here, he'd have two battle die. He'd be able to use these guys by flipping over one of these guys, taking this guy and choosing a location. So we'll just go ahead and pick this one here and then flip this over. Okay, we've got a monster that has a six on it and then he's worth one victory point. You're gonna roll the dice three times and if you can beat that number three times or two out of three times, you're going to win. That's a three, so that's a fail. This one here is an 11. Ooh, we're gonna see what happens. And then, oh, uh, double snake eyes, it's a complete fail. So if I would have successfully uh, beaten this guy, he would die. I would gain the victory point, I'd get my guy back. But if I do not, then the guy is going to stay here and the monster will as well until somebody deals with this guy or maybe a card brings my character back. Uh, the last thing you can do is trash cards from your hand. So like I said, you'll have your six cards in hand. And if you don't like them, you could choose to get rid of any of the ones you don't want and simply remove them from the game. And then of course, draw back up to your natural hand size. It can be a useful thing when you're getting rid of the basic cards so that you can utilize these big bad boys a little bit more. After you've done that, the next player is going to get to go and simply take those turns again. You're trying to gain victory points, and you're going to gain victory points by simply completing the different um, the different actions here. And it tells you it varies based on the monster, so that would be one point for this, four points for a temple, two for a shrine, one for a castle, one for a village, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So you're trying to get all the way to 12 here, along with utilizing your attributes here, so your tribute tokens, and if you have managed to acquire a couple of these, it'll reduce your cost or the requirement in order to win the game. Uh, like I said before, if you want to increase the length of the game, you can simply play up to 20, and it would function just the same way by simply placing them just like that. Uh, that is the basic idea of the game. You're simply trying to get to the end of the victory total, along with dealing with your opponents. When you place buildings down, um, and let's say your opponent also had a resource or resources there, it doesn't matter. They're going to stay there unless they can move it in some in some way, but uh, they're not able to build anything in this location. So you can basically uh, counteract their building process. So we'll have a little bit of a take that nature. And uh, when you, of course, can increase the area of the map, you can start building more stuff, which will also incorporate the gods' abilities, like boons and crops placed in Northlands can't be destroyed. So like I was showing you before, there are all the different types here. This is Northlands. If uh, my character, the green, were to play boons or crops, these guys here, players could not destroy them, which is a very useful thing. There's a lot of cards uh, in these decks here that can just do it, destroy two crops in your in your tribe. So you, that would actually you couldn't do that <laughs> with your own cards. So that's basically how it works. So deities, domination, art. Right, let's talk about it. So one little caveat before we continue: uh, when you can, when you want to tribute, you can actually tribute fervor, which is a resource basically on your board. You can spend two of it, and then you can gain a tribute. Tributes are valuable because after five, you can gain a tribute token, which is basically a free victory point. You're gonna get them from uh, tri uh, from fervor and from the temples, of course. So what do I think about deities domination? Well, it's a three to four player game. I'd like to see a two player variant added to it. Maybe a smaller board or something like that. I'm not sure how they would do that, but I think a two to four player game could function with this game. Um, we even tried a little bit how it was played, but it felt like it's, it's definitely better with more players. Definitely three and four players make it a lot more fun because it condenses all the chaos in one area. Whereas with less players, I imagine you can kind of run and do your own thing. Not only that, but all the gods are different and they play very differently. It's very surprising how one to two cards in your deck of 10 can change the way you're going to play the game along with the abilities, right? Like Poseidon here, he says that villagers uh, built on a coastline award two victory points, meaning that you should start building villages with this guy. It's, it's guaranteed. Uh, God powers. Flood one unoccupied map tile to gain four power. Remove the tile from the board, reshuffle into the pirate uh, tile deck, and permanently gain a battle die, which means that with two castles on the board, you would automatically get three battle dice, which means you can fight monsters and be very, very powerful. And they all do different things. Villages built on the coastline. Uh, this guy here says shrines built on forest, give you an additional shrine card, which makes your deck all the more powerful. Um, you've got, oh, let's see what other ones here. Boons and crops placed on Northlands can't be destroyed. So on and so forth. Not even including all 
the different cards you're going to get to change the way you're going to be using your play style. But when you gain battle dice, right, some of your gods are going to be less inclined to battle than others because you don't start with battle dice, so you're going to actually have to gain them if you want to utilize them, which can give you boatloads of points. For instance, these fire drakes and the cyclops can give you up to three points. However, you got to fight stuff like direwolf sometimes, and that's going to cost your turn. You're going to fight something that's worth zero, and if you somehow manage to not defeat him, it's also going to cost you resources. So battling is one of those very high risk reward style things. You get to choose the different decks. Maybe you don't want to fight a dire wolf because you saw your opponent have to deal with it and he somehow managed to fail that. So you can actually move to one of the different decks. It has that ability in the game and it's really, really nice. I really like that added feeling to the game. The artwork is beautiful. All of these different cards, I like that. And I like the movement. It reminds me kind of like El Dorado in a sense as for how you're moving around the board and uh, trying to basically secure your space as your big deity is raining down above. Um, not only that, what's really interesting too is your game gaining these different uh, tribute points, which gives you that extra bonus point. It's weird because you would think when you're basically gaining points to win the game, you could put it in the beginning, but I like the feeling of you're praying to your god and the god is making the game easier for you to win, especially if you start with building a temple first. That can actually utilize you to be able to gain these points and people either have to spend mo momentous amounts of resources to stop you from gaining it or just allow you to slowly build up to win the game earlier. However, then you might not be playing to one of your strengths, which is your god power, which then can hurt you at the end. So it's kind of giving you that catch-all. Do you want to do this or that? You can try everything, but it might hurt you in the long run. It could be beneficial. It's really just dependent on how you play and what luck you get with the cards you draw from a deck. It's a micro deck builder because you start off with a certain amount of cards and you are going to gain cards in your deck that are going to give you benefits. You'll have the option of doing one of the two different actions on these guys here. And they're also a lot more powerful. And of course, these guys here are definitely more powerful. Choose, uh, choose power, growth, or fervor, roll a die, and gain that amount of your chosen currency. That's really good compared to plus two or three. Uh, this one can actually gain you up to plus six, but it can also get you plus one. Uh, gaining four crops, that's a good solid standard right in the middle one. Overall, though, if you like a little bit of worker, a little bit of, you, you, you it's a little bit of deck building, it's also a little bit of like tactical area control, you're going to enjoy this game. It has that feel to it. Um, it would feel kind of like a standard one of those type of games, if not for the fact that the theme gives it its own unique feel. You do feel like you're a god writing down on your, your, your dudes, and you feel like you have to choose between whether you want to be malicious towards your people and um, even worse towards your enemies or you want to be benevolent towards your people and leave your enemies alone and just do what you need to do in order to survive and uh, have your civilization thrive and you have that option to go more aggressive against your opponents and putting pieces down to block their area so that they actually can't gain the locations or keeping yourself at bay while people attack each other and stuff like that. It has all that and I like that aspect to a game. Some people might say it's not enough, some people might say it's too much, it kind of has that like right in the middle feels to how a game is going to function. Overall though, definitely a game that I enjoyed playing. Uh, comparatively to our original game when we first got this game, we, we were trying it out. We were like, nah, nah, nah. Uh, he went back to the drawing board actually and brought it back. It was like, we're not going to do this review. We're doing it later. And when he brought it back to us, we started playing it and I'm like, wow, they made so many unique and interesting changes and it flows and it works completely like way, way, way better than before. It was almost like not even playable before compared to now. Like this is definitely... Definitely better. And if it sounds like something to be interested in for you, go ahead and check it out. You can look at the Kickstarter description down below for the game Deity's Domination. Definitely a fun little game. A little bit of everything in this one for sure. All right. Decide for yourself whether it's something you think you'd be interested in. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. As well as don't forget to check out the game Deity's Domination on Kickstarter. The game of Benevolent and Ben... And Benevolent and benevolent, benevolent, benevolent gods in which you try to destroy things and control the land. All right, as well as check our website, Unfiltered Gaming Hong Kong, that's a blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. All of our giveaways, we're giving away two games right now Stupid Users Beta, as well as the game Fires of Eidolon, another excellent, excellent game. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. As always, I look forward to building with you a community um, of people because I'm a god and, and stuff. All right, bye.